When looking at the properties of any given part, the cantilevered beam is one of the most unique tests because you apply a force to the edge of something protruding from something else. So this is really useful in understanding the strength of parts. But with 3D printed parts, they have a difference from standard to just materials. You can actually change the infill density so that you do not have a solid part. So in this video, we test how infill density affects how a cantilevered beam behaves. So how this test was set up, we used 20 millimeter rods printed in a standard PLA. The force was applied at 40 millimeters from the point of rotation, and it was held in the same position throughout all of these tests. Therefore, we have a nice consistent piece of data for each one of these rods. Generally with this, you would expect the strength of the part to continue to increase linearly as density increases because you're effectively making a more dense part. So more material should make it more structural in proportion to the amount of material that you're adding. But let's go ahead and see if that actually holds true. We start off with a 10% infill using, of course, the rectilinear infill. Here, as you see the compression start to increase, this part does have a little bit of bowing before it finally hits failure, and the failure point comes at about 66 newtons. We did three tests for each one of these, and the average for this 10% infill was 71.3 newtons. Now moving on to the 20% infill. The 20% infill also increases weight just a little bit, increases print time by about 25%. Again, you have just a little bit of bowing, but the strength is increasing with final breakage happening at 84 newtons on this test, but an average break of 96 newtons across all three iterations. Now moving on to the 30% infill, high in density from a visual perspective. This takes a little bit longer to print, but overall, as this test goes along, we ended up with a final break of about 124 newtons when it finally gives out. But you can see it has a good amount of deflection there overall, and a fairly subtle break, but the average uh, weight that it was able to hold up to was 130 newtons. Now moving on to the 40% infill. 40% was an interesting transition. Ended up breaking at about 140 newtons, but it had a strength to weight ratio of about 9.9. .9. All tests up to this point have held between the nine and 10 strength to weight ratio. And it's been interesting to see that continue to maintain that that small proportion of increase of material improves the strength proportionately. Now to the 50% infill. This one, a great big step. You're almost having a completely enclosed volume now. As the pressure is applied there, this one ends up failing at 174 newtons. While the data on this test was a bit more noisy over the three iterations, you had an average peak force of 165, but still the strength to weight ratio remains at 9.7. So it's following typical material properties, which you would kind of expect in this sort of a test. It's really great to see that type of consistency because you know you have a good testing setup and good testing materials. Now moving to the 60% infill. In this case, 60% does print quite slowly. It's up to 1.25 hours, and we ended up averaging about 175 newtons which again, a good increase, a good linear increase from other tests and still maintaining that strength to weight of about nine to 10. In this case, it was 9.3. Moving up to 70% now, we're gonna go ahead and we have it almost completely filled. At 70% in practice, you generally can't really see the delineation in the infill. It looks practically solid, but as the force is applied there, you can see it deflect quite a bit. The deflection has been pretty consistent, which is noticeable for PLA because PLA is such a brittle material. But the breakage is quite calm given how much force is being applied there. The average for the 70% was 202 newtons, but still maintaining that strength to weight of 9.6, similar to all previous versions of infill. Now moving on to 80%, 80%, we're starting to get a fairly large increase in print time, 1.5 hours with just a generic print speed. But this part, we end up peaking out at 232 newtons with that 80% infill. And again, strength to weight of 9.9, .9, still right at the bottom edge of the 10 that we've had. Now moving on to 90%, 90% almost perfectly full, but just a little bit short as we see the compression start to take hold on there. Again, the deflection seems to hold and we have the average force of 330 newtons, which is a large jump from previous tests, a lot more strength than this one. And we had a strength to weight ratio of 12.6 there's certainly been some sort of switch flipped going up to the 90% infill, probably because it's starting to behave much more isotropically. 
Now moving on to the 100% infill. Most people avoid this because it adds a lot of extra material to the part and a lot of extra print time. The 100% actually though does not add that much more from previous iterations, only about a few percentage points there. But overall, the strength radically increases between 80% to 100%, almost doubling at 520 newtons over the average of the three tests. We had a much stronger part and the strength to weight also almost doubled from all previous tests. At 80%, we were still at a strength to weight of about 10 and that held for everything down to 10%. But at 100% infill, we had a strength to weight ratio of 18.8. So those tests went pretty much the way we expected. A linear increase in infill it created a linear increase in overall strength. They're following good mechanical properties that you would expect in physics. But an interesting thing happened. Once we flipped into 90% and 100% infill, both the strength to weight ratio and the overall strength of the part radically shot up, which is a very interesting phenomenon because it was still a linear increase in material. So the dynamics of the print process were changing at those infills. Now we can only hypothesize hypothesize about what those precise properties were, but right now we can presume that it's probably due to the amount of overlap of the individual rastering lines inside of the print and the increased heat density, because since the infill is not so spaced out that there's airflow around it, the beads of filament do not cool down as quickly, so they have more time to adhere to each other and bond, creating a more isotropic-like part. Therefore, you get a lot more strength out of it rather than just simply the layer adhesion of native infills. In next test, what we will do is we will actually take that 100% and 90% infill parts and compare them against traditional isotropic parts like injection molding or machined pieces. And can you push them even further by taking the dynamics at play here and make the part as strong as those other processes. So changing infill doesn't really make that much of a difference unless you go all the way up to 100%. However, wall thickness can make a great big difference in strength. And we tested that over here on the Tangle testing channel. So you can see how wall thickness actually impacts strength in a much more significant way than just changing infill does. So make sure that you like and subscribe to see more of those videos and drop us a comment down below of other tests that you would like to see on this channel. Have a great day, everybody.